All right, everyone. Today we're going to talk about pinworms, which that sounded kind of exciting. It's not an exciting thing. It's not fun if you have pinworms. I know I just, I don't know why, but it sounds like it, just the name sounds more enjoyable than it really is, right? A pinworm, like a pinwheel? I don't know. A lot of these slides, this is a quick little presentation. A lot of these slides are just FYI. They're not going to be testable material. I will definitely tell you which slides to put a star on and the ones I do want you to study for testing purposes for my exam and for board exams and for practice and all that good stuff is related to farm. So intro here, just it is a common, it is one of the most common worm infections worldwide, pinworm and whipworm, but here we'll just talk about pinworm. It can happen in temperate and tropical climates, most common in the US and Western Europe. So it is something that you guys will probably be coming across in your practice and maybe even on rotations. Again, just FYI, but you know, humans are the only natural hosts. It can happen anywhere, kind of any socioeconomic group um, all over the U.S. Um, you can see these. It is typically a pediatric concern, so usually it is with younger patients. So on your pediatric rotations or if you end up working with pediatric pediatrician, um, it is something that you'll probably see more with them. Clinical manifestations, just going to put an FYI on here. Just read through this. This will help. It's ICM stuff, but, uh, you know, maybe help you guys here. Same thing with diagnosis. Don't worry about that for um, for my presentation. I mean, for, for my course, I just realized, too, I put picture here. This is from up to date. So if you want to go see the picture, just refer back to up to date treatment. So this is put a star here. I do want you to know first, second line treatments here. Um, so we have... Um, for as far as prescription goes, albendazole and or mebendazole. So those are prescription strength. Um, go ahead and read through those. But those you can prescribe those. It's usually a one-time dose on those. There's also over-the-counter pyrental pomoate. So that one is Reese's. No, they make a <laughs> – let me show you guys real quick. They make an over-the-counter product called Reese's. Here we go. Here is – well, this isn't Reese's, but let me make this bigger for you all. Um, just go to Google Shopping, yeah, and type this in, and you'll notice here's Reese's, Reese's Pinworm Medication. So we, they sell that over the counter. They make generic ones, too, so you notice here's a Walgreens one. And no, this presentation is not brought to you by Google Shopping or Walgreens. I wish I wish I had sponsors, um, but I don't. So <laughs> just UTRGV pays me. Um, but yeah, so you notice here that you can um, buy it online, I guess. You buy it in most pharmacies and stuff over the counter. So it is popular, and... Um, for the entire family. Um, but but there's also some prescription options that you guys will be able to prescribe. Um, I also noticed too, it's just interesting, they have apple flavored ones for horses, which is interesting. Came across that. But that's not going to be on the test. That is... So don't worry about apple flavored ones for horses. But anyway, just, so, but just please note this is over the counter. Um, and it's cheap and effective. And so that may be something that your patients have already tried before they come to see you, and then you may need to prescribe this. Or it might be something you recommend for your patients, if depending on their insurance or how expensive these are or if, whatever, you know, depending on their uh, socioeconomic status or whatever. Um, there are some adverse effects you'll be concerned with the over-the-counter product. Mainly GI, ups, um, GI adverse effects are the ones you have to be concerned with. There are transient increases in hepatic enzymes. Usually not a big deal um, because it's the person's not on it long term and usually not an issue there. Um, you will need to treat the whole household. Make sure you educate your patients on washing all their bedding, clothes, everything, and that they need to have hygienic measures. Um, so, you know, to help reduce reinfection. So just going to read through all that. Um, these are treatments that you should not be using, ivermectin and bip Um so those are ones that historically maybe have thought have been, been good, but don't worry about those. Just put a big X on the slide. Don't use those to treat. And then please note for pregnancy, the pyrental pimoet is favored over the mebendazole and albendazole. So please put a note star by that. Um, that is important for testing purposes and for your board exams as well. So that is it. Um, quick presentation. I wish they could all be this quick and easy, um, but they're not. So basically there's three medications you have to worry about. Two are prescription, one is over-the-counter, um, and the over-the-counter one is preferred in pregnant women. That's kind of the take-home point of this presentation. So, And then some adverse effects for the over-the-counter one you have to be concerned with, mainly GI, right? So, so anyways, as usual, thank you guys for your time and attention. I greatly appreciate you guys listening to me. 
And also, as always, please feel free to email me comments, feedback, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. No, I'm kidding. This would be, I should put these on YouTube, right? And Oh, and then I should put the sponsors, put the ads on YouTube. So then you guys would like rack up my views, subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Start getting paid in the shade on YouTube. No, but anyways, the university probably has some policy. I'm probably not allowed to do that. But anyways, all right. Thank you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.